along those lines, Kyle, I do a very similar thing as JC, AVID at, there at, the, uh, uh, at the house while it's empty. I also take advantage of that time to do some social media posting. So actually run around, get some good photos of the house while there's no one there. That way you have some stuff to put up on your Instagram and things like that. You can do a walkthrough very easily because the clients are usually out of the house for a while. Um, the other thing is I like to take the opportunity to have the clients come there before the home inspector is ready to, to debrief. And I'll go through the disclosures with them at that point, because what I like to do is say, hey, we're at the house. The home inspector is going to give us his his opinion about what's happening here, what he finds. And then we're going to take what the sellers are telling us about the property at the same time. And we're going to overlay these things and make sure the story makes sense. Right. And that gives them a sense that we're getting a very comprehensive picture of the property. And, you know, the home inspector might be like, hey, look at this doodad over here that's out of place. We look at the disclosure and say, yeah, it's right here. Seller said this about it. Makes them feel good about it and, and moves things along a lot quicker. And if you do it correctly, you should be able to sign that whole thing off that day and move on, you know, with the rest. I don't like to have, and the TCs know this, I don't like to have those disclosures just sent straight to the clients for them to read and get freaked out about without me there. I'd much rather sit down with them, go through those disclosures together so I can temper what they're seeing and keep them calm and collected at the same time. And then one other point, you mentioned this earlier, Kyle. We have to know our product cold. If we sold watches, we would know the difference between a Seiko and a Rolex and a, 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 a Bartling or whatever, right? So when we go through homes, we should do the same thing. Like if we got clients that are out looking at a 1929 house in freaking uh, you know Lincoln Heights or whatever, like, yeah, they should know that this home's gonna have that you know, two, two wire uninsulated wiring underneath the house. And it's probably going to have cast iron drain pipes and it's going to be on a raised foundation. And so when we walk through the house, we're not like, oh, look, this is a nice open space or look at that window over there. Or, Isn't this chimney quaint? No one gives a shit. What we want to talk about there is what product they're getting and what to expect with that product and make sure it fits what they're looking for. If someone wants a nice turnkey, ready to rock and roll house with no maintenance, you should not be taking them to see something that was built in 1940, just period end of story, right? If they do want that, they need to tell you ahead of time that they're ready to, to deal with what comes with an older property like that, okay? And you'll see it too, it's very simple. Those 40s, 50, 50s homes have their set of issues you deal with. The 80s, 90s homes, they have their issues to deal with versus brand new construction, right? So when you're walking through the house, you're setting, you're setting them up for what to expect with that type of home in the first place. And never, ever, ever will I let someone buy a property that's going to cause me to have to have 100 phone calls after it closes escrow because this, that, and the other thing fell apart. I do not have time for it. I will pull them out of the house and move to the next one. 